Pilots. Its mission? Whoa, 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 whoa. To become the world's first commercial manned space vehicle. This is not good. If successful, Very rough ride initially. the flight of Spaceship One will open a new era of space exploration. Wow, well, you would not believe the view. Looking forward to see that black sky. All right. In the middle of the Mojave Desert, visionary airplane designer Bert Rattan and his company Scaled Composites, a renegade band of test pilots, engineers, and mechanics are challenging 50 years of thinking about space travel. Boomerang 24 Bravo Tango is taking the after 3 zero. I'll be departing. Ten months ago, construction began on the first of two unique flying machines. Today, the team reaches a major milestone in their secret program codenamed Tier 1. Test pilot Doug Shane and co-pilot Pete Siebold prepare their mothership for its maiden flight. Hey John, Scott, one, one, taxi one, white knight with one mobile on to three zero for departure. What type is it? We're calling it a white knight. I just gotta ask a question when I see something that isn't the same as usual. What is usual, John? <laughs> white knight has just one purpose, to lift a rocket plane to 50,000 feet and drop it. 110, 120, watch the speed. Watch the speed. Big vibration. Doug, your spoilers are flapping. Damn, the spoilers are sucking up. Got a lot of vibration. Go slow it down. Mike, can you give me a look? Stand by. Okay, copy that. Spoilers are spoiling flaps. Affirmative, about three or four hertz in there. It looks like they're going pretty big deflection. Well, it's a fulfillment of a dream, uh, a specific dream that's about seven years old. Okay, yeah, Mike, everything seems fine below 100. We're trying to stay. We are doing as a project here at scale right now, and we have been since April, a space program. Back in 1994, I started toying with what it would take for us to build a supersonic, even hypersonic airplane. The dream of this was such a phenomenally exciting ride. We're going to rocket and accelerate really fast. I mean, we're going to go three and a half Gs straight up. That's a neat ride. <laughs> RCS on. And then we're going to spend about four minutes weightless. Please shut down. Here comes Santa. And we're going to break out of the atmosphere into the black sky, and we're going to get the same view you do from orbit. Obviously, the world's greatest roller coaster would be a suborbital space flight that could be offered to the public. Bert Rutan is not alone in his dream. In 1996, a group of space enthusiasts announced the X Prize, an international contest intended to jumpstart space tourism. The first non-governmental group to make a suborbital flight to an altitude of 328,000 feet, or 62 miles, twice within two weeks will take home the $10 million purse. Aviation prizes have a long history of inspiring innovation, including the $25,000 Orteg Prize that Charles Lindbergh claimed by flying nonstop across the Atlantic in 1927. Its modern-day equivalent, the X Prize, has 20 teams from seven countries signed up to compete, including Bert Rattan. Boy, did it straighten back out quickly. Pretty stable, huh? In the late 90s, Rattan took his ideas off the drawing board for their first test flights. A feather angle of 55 degrees. Uh, 50 degrees. Did I say 50? 50 degrees. Research should be defined as doing something where half of the people think it's impossible. Impossible. And half of them think, mm, maybe that'll work. Right? When there's ever a breakthrough, a true breakthrough, you can go back and find a time period when the consensus was, well, that's nonsense. So what that means is that a true creative researcher has to have confidence in nonsense. Over the last three decades, Bert Rutan designed, built, and tested more than one original aircraft a year. In 1986, 
His Voyager airplane became the first and only craft to circle the globe without refueling. From his early home-built kit planes to his recent high-altitude research craft, his theories and designs change the shape of things that fly in the air. Now, his sights are set a little higher. Construction of the dream begins officially in March of 2001, when investor Paul Allen pledges financial support for the secret project. I think we're not that far from the time when private individuals with a sense of adventure can, can try some kind of space tourism experience. I think that kind of experience, to have that open up to be available by anyone, that's a very exciting prospect. We have a counter to the event. Roger, thank you. What's the event registered There's less than 500 people that have flown in space in 40 years. A lot of people want to fly in space. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia. And they think that our government is working to make it, hopefully in their lifetimes, cheap enough for them to fly in space, when indeed they're not. Unless guys like me go out and do this, it will not get done, period. Bert's plan calls for the...